Welcome to day three from 16 Karat Gold 2020. We're ending the media center with the traditional roundup. First up, we have a free, a pair of free on top of stage. Tassi Leung, Felix Kohlenberg, and Dennis Birkendahl making his panel debut. And you know the deal. Gr grill him whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, so first of all, uh, congratulations on a great weekend so far, and um, obviously one more show to go. Um, obviously the big story is at the end of night two, David Starr said that uh, freedom of speech doesn't have freedom of consequences. Um, so could you just talk through the decision to mutually part with Starr? And also as part of that, could you talk about um, what he's been saying about WWE and your thoughts on that, but also more widely the type of changes he's making more generally to pro wrestling. So better wages for workers, better treatment, and also non-use of talent on free basis for exposure. Yeah, that there's also going to be a certain limit to how deep we're going to dive into this. Um, yesterday, we've treated this in a way where uh, we sat down together with David Starr before the show and pretty much told him, hey, uh, after the show, the ring is yours, the mic is yours, say whatever you'd like to say. Um, it's your decision whether this is going to be a promo inside the storyline universe of WXW and this promo would be included in the release or whether it's a live promo that's more the person behind David Starr speaking to the people in attendance. Uh, the latter got chosen and David said whatever he'd like to say and uh, we appreciate this. We also appreciate the kind words that he posted regarding us on Twitter that he said personally to WXW as well as to the people behind WXW and we're going to miss him a whole lot. We will not comment on the decision itself, but I want to uh, make really sure that people know how much we appreciate David Starr as a person, as well as as a talent. Obviously, uh, you've seen that this match got set up a couple of months ago, so that's the decision that has been made a couple of months ago. And I'm very sure there are people who know that uh, if they have come to terms with their job, and if they're on their way out, they're going to take the easy way. or not show up to work or phone it in or do business for himself. And he did not do that. If you, if you take any look at the body of work that he has delivered since, for example, December, it was a great forward dance at the anniversary. If you've seen the Paris show, he did, I want to say, at least for two of the three guys he worked with, he definitely did the diverse matches of, of their career. He did a great cage match in January. He did a hell of a match with Ilya. And he did 41 minutes yesterday. So he went out as an absolute professional and we're going to hold him in, in the best regards. And as much as David Starr says, he's always going to be a WXW guy. We always have David Starr's back. Just, just very quickly to come back on that. Um, I appreciate there's stuff you can't say. I mean, I think one thing I would just say you know, praise WXW for is obviously this has happened with progress and fans were left in the dark. Star wasn't allowed to talk about it in the show. And so I suppose at the very least, it's good that Stoll is able to talk to the crowd in an honest and open way with no restrictions. So I think that is to your credit. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, thank you again for having us this weekend. It's been uh, fabulous as always. Um, what's interested me at the moment is your relationship with WWE, which is always around and you here and you have to, you're answering questions, which is very kind of you. I'm just really interested, what is in it for you? So from my perception as a fan, and someone come here as for media, um, I'm looking at this from a different perspective, so I do appreciate that. Um, but as a fan, I might want to see Leo Rush. I might have come all the way to see him or planned the visit, and then he's pulled last minute. And then you bring in a great replacement, so there's no complaints there. But this isn't a one-off. This is a common theme, and to me, it feels to me like you're happy to take the crumbs a little bit. This is just my perception. I'd rather be honest with you. And it's not apparent to me what you're really getting out of this relationship. So I'd just like to understand from your point of view what you guys feel is the bonuses and the benefits and the pluses of this relationship. Hi, guys. Uh, I can totally, or we can totally understand uh, that you're disappointed if you come here to see Leo Rush. And we know that when we see the social media reach he had and sales and everything that happened after we announced him, 
that he definitely was the biggest star in the tournament. We know that. Uh, it's unfortunate that it happened. Uh, on the other hand, you have to see what happens still and the talent that is here because you just saw a matinee event in front of 400 or 500 people. Tess, 500? I don't know. Okay. 500, 600 people. 93,000. No. Okay, so uh, you just saw a matinee event where we had unannounced Killer Kelly, Valkyrie, uh, we had Walter on the card, we will have Ilya Dragunov on the Sunday card, on the night three card. Um, and I know the disappointment is big, but Honestly, I don't see the point in, hey, this happens every so often. Yes, talent gets pulled everywhere. Talent pulls itself sometimes because they can't do it because of travel issues or something, something, something happening. And it happened. It happens. That's just the thing that, you know, is going on. So, yeah, I agree with what Dennis said. And I think the it's not as common as you might think because every time it happens, of course, it's a big story, but if one WWE wrestler versus um, one of the partner promotions is so, it's not special anymore. So if that's just a regular story, but if they get pulled, it's a big story. So in December, we had Cassius Ono, um, we had Marcel Bartel here. So we had Ilya, obviously, and and a lot of NXT UK talent like Walter Munch, Jordan Devlin was here just two weeks ago. So it's frequent, so it's not as bad as it seems. And we would have been able to work out a replacement with WWE, but we would have known it would have taken longer and it would have been shorter to 16 carat and might have not fulfilled what we want to do. So we went the other way and did it on our own. So it's not like they left us stranded alone. So. Um, keeping a bit with the WWE team, uh, theme, um, there were talks uh, last year from WWE themselves that they were looking to add a third tier to the network that would feature some of the partner promotion content. I think so much has been said publicly. Um, now with the recent departure of uh, Michelle Wilson and George Barrios from WWE, it looks like the network is going to take another direction. Uh, Vince McMahon himself on an investor's call uh, talked about maybe taking the uh, pay-per-views off and going with uh, more established uh, streaming services or upcoming streaming services. Um, from how much you can talk about this kind of stuff, um, is anything from your point of knowledge a still honest plan or uh, could this be a deal that eventually falls through if the network goes into a totally different direction and uh, doesn't feature their original content anymore? Do you think it, uh, they will rely more heavily on their partners to fill the gaps or can, can you say anything about uh, that at all from your point of view? Uh, yeah, that this has been a wildly interesting story, especially if you're interested in the background behind wrestling and, and seeing what hap what's happening on, on the financial and business strategic um, level. This has been the story of the year, and we're following it pretty much as closely as you guys are. Uh, we have a group chat about this and, and have been following it up and, and sending around transcripts of phone calls. And yeah, this, this is far above uh, all levels of contact that, that we have. Um, so we're as much on the outside at, uh, with this as you guys are. Um, it's interesting, and I want to see where it goes, because this has the potential to, to change how content in the industry is distributed, uh, both for WWE as well as potentially for other promotions, but we have no idea what's going to happen. Hi, guys. Uh thought it was interesting that you mentioned uh, Killer Kelly when you named the names that are here on this show with Walter, Ilya, and Valkyrie. Um, can you talk about how, um, can you talk about the accessibility you have to, towards Killer Kelly and uh, booking her? Because um, I looked it up and I think she had her last NXT UK match somewhat last November and hasn't appeared for them since, uh, has been wrestling for Rev Pro, Eve, and other companies uh, since. Um, so, um, Basically, the question is, how much can you say about her status right now? I know this is another disappointing answer, but, <laughs> but, uh, 
but we can't say anything about her status with another company where she's working for. So, yeah, I, I believe Killer Kelly wants to wrestle more on TV, but that's as far as we know, you know? Uh, I also think you've just mentioned that she worked for RevPro, so that should give anybody like an indication of what might be happening without, of course, I don't know Kelly's contracts or anything, but she worked for RevPro. <laughs> hey guys. Um, with uh, David Starr now obviously gone and uh, Timothy Thatcher also moving over to uh, NXT. So there are two more main eventers uh, leaving uh, WXW. So how is WXW trying to fill the gap? Because it feels like, especially on the top of the card, that there's some kind of lack of talent or of build-up talent there. I mean, we did this like... Three years ago, it started with our talent going elsewhere, like when Junior got signed, Marty Skrull went off, Zack Sabre went off, it happens all the time. But right now, it's like pushing a bit, obviously, like if you all the main eventers we built up went elsewhere, and that's not a field, that's the way it is, actually. That's, that's the truth, but if you look at 16 Carat this year, we try to have it like differently than the other 16 carats. We did like a lot of fresh new talent we wanted to present here with a lot of hungry talent. I think it's the most hungry 16 carats that we ever had here. Like everybody wants to step up. So the spots are there. Everybody's working towards them. I think it's, it's just a different time. And not as many established main event wrestlers we have in Germany, or in Europe, on WXW right now. But I think the talent was coming up is so bright and there's so much possibilities right now. They have, so we have a lot of possibilities where we can go. So I think it's an interesting time to follow, but it will be like changes gonna happen, of course, over the next few months. Uh, hey guys, uh, first congratulations on such a successful weekend, uh, especially last night seeing so many people here was uh, really a sight to behold. Uh, at Tag Festival, we talked a little bit about Lucky Kid winning Carrot last year and maybe his year so far in 2019. Uh, I kind of wondered with him uh, going out of the tournament on day one this year, um, and that's obviously quite a difference. I wonder how you'd characterize Lucky Kid's year. Would you characterize his Carrot win last year as, as a success for him? And I mean, where, where does he fit in in uh, WXW's plans going forward? Uh, where in the card uh, does Lucky Kid slot right now? Yeah, so I think Lucky uh, had a very, very interesting year of 2000, from last year's carrot to this year's carrot. Um, going all the way of being booked all over England, being included in Schadenfreude, not being included in Schadenfreude, uh, being in Rice, not being in Rice, fighting against the Perch Club, you know. So um, I think that uh, Lucky Kid uh, is still one of our brightest hopes and uh, he's uh, definitely on our focus to be one of the main guys in 2020 in WXW. Um, so yeah, everything is going as planned, I would say, at the moment. Uh, and we think that he had definitely great outings with Cassius at 90th anniversary, for example. And obviously the Perch Club feud um, was ended uh, with the match at uh, in Hamburg against Pete. Um, so yeah, 2020 will be a great year, hopefully for Lucky. Um, coming back to Killer Kelly, uh, one in storyline thing I noticed, and I, I like this story uh, very much the way it has been told thus far, with uh, like uh, Alexander Chain being kind of the abusive boyfriend, uh, especially with it being uh, World Women's Day today. Um, so congratulations on that storyline. I'm really intrigued and it really has put uh, Alexander James on a new level for me in terms of interest uh, after the uh, Jörn Simmons uh, storyline, which had good matches but has been met with some criticism. Um, so congratulations. I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And uh, speaking of somebody else recently uh, very publicly quit NXT UK, uh, Jesse Gabbard. Uh, she's also portraying a very strong uh, woman. Have there been any talks with her since she departed? And uh, are you open to working with her again in the future? So far, there haven't been any 
talks about that. So you never close the door. She obviously worked for us for a whole year, one year and a half. That we had a good run. I think a really back, a great storyline with Melanie Gray, with Maris from Beethoven, and Kevin was involved. I think we did a really good storyline there. She had a good comeback, a shortcut to the top afterwards. So we we'll see what happens, but nothing is planned as of now. Um, congratulations on the record carrot weekend. I think uh, especially last night was very special. I can't remember that I witnessed a, a match like Bandido versus Speedball Mike Bailey, not only like the in-ring action, but the, the fans and the, the loudness and, and uh, the appreciation. I think, uh, yeah, I think many people were speechless after that. And, um, so yeah, since today's International Women's Day, I would like to ask um, what are the plans for the women's division in the near future and uh, will women wrestling play a bigger role in WXW than in the present? We tried to build up the women's division a few years ago and it's kind of the same like the main event scene we talked about with building up Tony Storm and then obviously like Valkyrie now and Killer Kelly last year it was hard to keep it going really but it's still one of our main focus to do more there. Um, we tried a different um, tour stays last year bringing different wrestlers have them on tour for us for six weeks and see who's getting over who's connecting with the crowd so Leila Hirsch will be back with us, it's already announced. So she obviously got over the great outing with Lufisto at Femme Fatale. So she was somebody we want to bring back. She would have been back earlier, but she's in Japan right now. So that's great for her, obviously. And there will be like different kind of stuff like that we will bring back. So um, Femme Fatale is already planned. Um, so there will be new talent there. Um, so it's one of the main focus, like you said, um, Killer Kelly is having a bigger storyline now, so we're trying to put like more emphasis on that. And obviously, the whole storyline around Amel, so there's stuff happening, and it's one of our focuses, of course. Uh, good and dark. Another weekend hasn't uh, finished yet, but what are currently your biggest uh, accomplishments that have happened so far over the weekend? Or what are the things you can look back on and go, that went very well? Uh, yeah, Bandido and, and Speedball has been mentioned. That has been incredible, both from the performance in the ring as well as from everything that happened after the match. Um, I thought both super fights at the Ambition event were very, very special from what happened. Uh, I also think last night's main event was, was incredibly special. Those were the things that stood out to me. Do you want to add anything else? Thanks for taking everything away. <laughs> There's probably more good stuff if, if, you, if you chose to think about it. <laughs> I want to add one thing, and that was the JAA Tag Team Experten Gauntlet, <laughs> which, which is, I believe, one of the most amazing things that ever happened at 16 Carats. So, excuse me? Yes, uh, with the greatest graphics in graphic design history. Yeah, we thought so as well after we did the thing yesterday. <laughs> what a pity we only did that yesterday, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this becomes like an annual thing now, but I don't know if we can go with that. A little bonus, I don't know if you've seen it, but for the Tech Team Expert and Godlet, both guys have been on commentary, with uh, Jess Gillard adding thoughts to German commentary and Absolute Andy being on English commentary, <laughs> resembling the great Lothar Matthäus, so this is going to be very fun to watch. Um, can you give us an update on Fight Müller? We know, we know he had some personal issues, he has been announced for uh, ambition and pulled out of ambition again. Can you give us a little bit of a... Uh, yes, uh, he chose to message us four days before 16 Carat and decided not to show up. And... Um, yeah, we have a lot of wrestlers that want to be on shows and show up for shows. So I think that kind of burns the bridge for the time being. Uh, but eventually something might change in people's lives and maybe there's a, a, new, a new attempt a year from now or two years from now. Uh, but for now, this is like the minimal requirement, show up to work. Oh, didn't expect that. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually wanted to go in a different direction, uh, guys. Uh, 
<laughs> that's fine for you. Um, I wanted to talk about the uh, sh um, showcase show yesterday with the different promotions. I asked the promoters yesterday um, how they viewed it from their point, and they were all very happy about being able to sh showcase the talent on this show and being on WXW right now, obviously. Um, how would you compare it to last year's Wrestling Deutschland show, and will you be able to do the same format or a comparable format at next year's tournament? I think it was a really interesting show to get so much new international talent on one show because I think no one in this building has seen everybody who wrestled in that ring before, so it was something new. A lot of guys who tried to to, get, to kind of use it as a tryout for WXW, of course, and showcase for their promotion, so everybody worked really hard to make an impression there. And I think there were like um, a lot of good matches in there, and I think it was just so much new talent, so it was interesting to see. Um, and we rather showcase partners we work with and have on WXW now or work with in other cap capacities, like obviously bringing back CCW to Germany, going to Canada with Smash, and sharing talent with all these other promotions. So it's something we want to try again. We have to talk it over, but I think something like that is rather in the future than bringing back Wrestling Deutschland. Hi guys, um, so obviously Alex Shelley was meant to be here yesterday in like a special showcase match and he couldn't travel unfortunately due to corona related reasons. Um, I'm just wondering what were the plans for him this weekend and obviously with his job allowing is there any plans to maybe try and bring him back in for a weekend? So uh, yeah, we definitely want to bring in Alex Shelley at one point. That is the positive thing, I believe. And 16 years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Felix Kohlenberg. How long can you take it? I don't know. <laughs> How long can you wait? So, uh, yeah, there are, we definitely want to do that at some point. Uh, the original plans, that's... He would have had a match. That's it. <laughs> it's not as big as you think. Maybe it's bigger. I don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah, so we hope to bring him in sooner than later. Just to go back to Alan's question. Um, first of all, I mean, I find it quite, quite interesting about Leo Rush and the ticket sales. I mean, fairness to me, I think there's an inkling there might be a personal issue with Leo Rush because they didn't use him this weekend. So maybe it's uh, not as uh, dastardly a thing he's not here. But could you just talk more about how you track talent and how they, uh, the impact they make? And if possible, as you mentioned, that Leo Rush was the first in terms of adding to ticket sales, in terms of how participants, it was like two and three. But also, secondly, I think Alan's question was more focused on the fact that NXT UK ran against you. And I remember back at Tag Festival, I asked you, do you think, you know, is there a risk that NXT UK runs against Carrot? And you're like, oh, I don't know, hopefully not, but we'll work it out. And you have. But this is now two tournaments in a row. Are you a bit worried for Catch Grand Prix? Well, um, for the first half of the year, we're doing three weekends in Oberhausen. Um, on all of the weekends, there's a similar problem, so uh, eventually every streak is going to break, right? <laughs> um, we're tracking social media by regular tools. We have a couple of tools to, to see what the reach of certain tweet and Instagram posts are. At times, we have uh, ticket links, including tracking. Uh, plus, of course, we track on which day, uh, which day we do sales and on which day we uh, drive content to, to WWE now, when content is going to be watched, when subscriptions are going to happen. So we use whatever we have at our disposal and uh, try to keep track of uh, who's popular where. And it's also interesting that, uh, for example, certain people have a lot more popularity on, on Twitter or with more English audience. Uh, then, for example, in Germany, uh, sometimes it's, it's very nice to see the completely different reactions and, and audiences we target at the same time, because very much there isn't the WXW audience. There's a lot of they have different people with, with different needs to what we should bring to them. Uh, I'd like to ask Tass about the Young Guns. Uh, they were the great secret of the northwest of England. Not so secret anymore after this weekend. Uh, you were in the ring with them at Tetsujin, and you were again in the ring with them yesterday. 
Um, firstly, I'd like to know your thoughts on how that went and did you have any advice for the guys on maybe how to approach things differently uh, now that they're here in Germany and uh, what are the plans going forward? Should we expect to see more of those guys uh, in the company? Yeah, when, when I didn't know them before the Tetsujin show, so th those were, were the two guys I hadn't heard of, uh, was in the ring with them, was blown away. Uh, I thought at this time one of them well, was a minor, so I'm like, okay, we gotta wait until we bring him to Germany. And then somebody was like, no, he's 18 yet. Oh, great. Hey, Felix, this is what we should do. And then we did it. Um, I think they did very well yesterday, uh, both at Ambition as well as in the JAA Wildcard Gauntlet thingy, Tag Team Expert, and whatever it's called. There's been different names for that. And I also think they did well today. Uh, I think they, they should watch not walking to the referee, and else they're going to be fine. <laughs> I think we got five or six more questions. I think then we wrap it up after that. Um, so I'll make the best of it and uh, throw a few short ones in there. Uh, first of all, can you uh, have you any idea how much money was collected in the ring yesterday after the Bandido uh, Mike Bailey match? And uh, they they uh, had somebody in the ring with them. Can you maybe explain who that person was, if you know? And also, can you give us an injury update on uh, Francis Caspin and maybe a reason why we haven't seen Karsten back in the ring this weekend? Or in a, in, not in the ring, but in a public uh, capacity. Okay, we have no idea how much money there was. Uh, I thought the first person uh, throwing a five cent piece was being a little cheap. Uh, <laughs> but when also, if, if you throw coins from a little bit, that, that's not bad. If you throw them from far away, it hurts. If you've ever watched, watched a football match, people go down for that. It's very hurtful. <laughs> okay, uh, Dennis has something to add. So on production, we were discussing if we should uh, give Tommy Giesen the call on his earpiece to ask the fans to not throw coins, but, um, but notes instead. So this was going on between uh, Felix, me and uh, Avalanche, I believe. And we discussed it for 20 seconds, back and forth, back and forth. And then Tommy Giesen took the mic and was like, notes, please. So uh, yeah, that was awesome, awesome moment. Yeah, yeah, Tom, Tommy's a hustler. Uh, we, we thought about taking this to the next generation and just have like, like uh, one of the, those uh, sum up terminals. People could just swipe their credit cards. So may maybe next time, okay? <laughs> Um, second was uh, the person who ring with them was uh, a huge Bandido fan and I think it, it meant a lot to him. I thought it was super cool that it happened because the non-existence of, of real boundaries and the uh, interactions between fans and, and, and wrestlers are what, what makes WXW really cool and this was super cool to us. Uh, Francis uh, has undergone a couple of, of therapies regarding his back. Uh, I think the first two did not work. Um, and we've been keeping him on storylines, but at one point uh, he told us, well, actually I'm, I'm in back pain and sitting in cars for six hours one way and six hours another way back is throwing me back every single time. So we're waiting for him to get healthy and then we're going to bring him back. Uh, Carsten is a difficult situation. Um, you have to know something is up because uh, he's our director of sports. He's currently not on the program in the middle of a storyline. Uh, he has chosen not to be public about it, so we're going to follow it. Uh, because we would figure we'd rather have this weird hole in our storylines for a bit rather than, than publishing something that doesn't want to be published. Uh, and once it's sorted, uh, we can explain afterwards. We'd rather treat it this way. Whilst you're being so wonderful and honest, um, can you tell us your perspective on Rico? Yeah, um, so WXW is a, uh, a company that grows talent in, in the way that we want them to get better at something. And so we want our commentary to get better as well. Uh, Andy, who is on commentary with Rico, is very inexperienced. We think he has a lot of potential, but he needs to become a decent play-by-play -play commentator. And he doesn't become that being on there with Rico, who is a wild and interesting color commentator. Um, so at one point we realized, well, Andy's picking up we have habits from Rico rather than growing himself. Uh, so we figured we need to put in him on with a good play-by-play -play guy, and we don't have a regular good play-by-play -play guy that's a native English speaker. So at one point we decided to switch Sebastian to English commentary for a bit, and we know that there's always going to be this weird thing with a non-English speaker on commentary for half a year maybe. Uh, 
but we figure it's the right move because we're going to take this step for a little bit until Andy is good enough to be the lead play-by-play -play guy for English on his own, and then we're going to re-add a color commentator. I don't know whether it's going to be Rico or somebody else, uh, but that's the reason for you to take him off it. I also want to ask you about developing talent. Um, obviously, we've seen guys like Devaniel come up. We've seen Santos uh, make a big impact this, this past year, and others from the academy, like, for example, Vincent Heisenberg had a great impression at uh, um, Ambition last night. Um, who are some other names from the academy that you would consider probably being on the bubble of getting to the main show? I see Dennis has an idea. Uh, I think you guys will hear a lot of uh, about uh, Anil Merrick uh, in the following at least years uh, because he has everything that a pro wrestler needs. Not the only thing missing is the experience at the moment. Uh, but everybody, I think, uh, in the office and uh, even in the acad not even and in the academy as well, is very high on him. So that's a name, Anil Merrick. Uh, yeah, this this weekend uh, we have showcased Stephanie Mays. I think she's very interesting. Uh, out of the people who haven't been on any WXW shows yet, I think Crimson could be interesting. He's a guy from, from Bavaria, but pretty much he's been with the Academy for a little while now, so we're going to see how this goes, but I think he, he stands out from the really young guys right now. Hi, guys. Um, very recently, there was a change at the WXW Academy with um, Dreisker, Robert Dreisker coming in as the new uh, head coach. Uh, kind of a two-part question. First of all, what was the decision-making process which made you come to Dreisker as a thing, and also uh, as, as the head coach? And also, uh, secondly, uh, how is he settling in, first of all? And you know, do you have high hopes for the future with him as the head coach? So the decision, that's something Tess and Felix have to answer, but I can tell you guys how he's settling in. He has been to Ikea's for at least two weeks in a row, and I'm not even joking, sadly. He was there for at least 10 days in a row every night, and he loved it. <laughs> so, uh, no, I think it's, it's great to have him at the academy, uh, especially Alex, uh, Katja and I which are at the office are happy to have him with us because he's a great person and I think that the academy, the work he's doing, you can already see it in the academy. It's very good to have a head coach there who is available the whole week, who is there five days a week and who is working with the young talent like basically every day and the process is something else. That's yeah, Robert was really taking over a lot of responsibilities last year already backstage. He was really helping everybody out and getting everybody better. He was working with everybody. He was working with us on, on, on storylines on how to get them over in the ring and was kind of taking Walter's job and Walter was not around anymore. So that was really helpful for us. And so he put himself basically into the position to be the first candidate for this position. And somebody who's so dedicated to leave his whole life behind himself in Austria, quit his job, move here, he really wants to do that and it's already showing after six weeks living here that he's a great addition here. So just to add that as well, to give you that insight, he lived in Vienna, which is what the most beautiful city in the world, named in every ranking. So, right. So when him and his girlfriend, they searched for an apartment uh, in Essen, uh, the people didn't believe him that he wanted to uh, move from Vienna to Essen. And yeah, they were like, no, that can't be. So there is something fishy going on here. So yeah. Okay, we better wrap it up. I got two more questions and that's it. Um, so I guess the biggest heel for events in Europe is the coronavirus. Um, I am very happy personally that 60 Carat wasn't cancelled, but a lot of events were cancelled in Italy and I think basically every event in Switzerland over 1,000 people. Yeah. Um, could you give us some insight to your communications um, like um, concerning the, the topic in the past week? Were there like some thoughts? Um, how was like the, in the, the management? 
Uh, so I'm, I'm more panicky at situations like this than everybody else. Uh, Felix pretty much played it by, eh, not gonna happen. Uh, so I sent everybody updates every day on a daily basis and just uh, wasted a couple of hours on contingency plans. What happens if uh, they force us not to run an event? What happens if there's a limit of people that we can allow there? What happens in this case? And they were happy to listen to it and to pitch in on that. Um, and I'm very happy it didn't happen. Of course, on uh, first day, we had to, to give a little data to, to the city and uh, make sure the event was fine. We also made sure that all talent uh, coming in from higher risk countries, even though I forget this time saying Japan is a higher risk country and Germany is kind of a stretch, uh, that they had, had the right clearance. We made sure of that. Um, it has affected, of course, the Alex Shelley booking. Um, we had a student over from Israel and, and he got the call of um, the immigration procedure in Israel changing now. Pretty much the call was, okay, you get on a plane tomorrow or in three months from now. So he missed six in Kerry because of that. And uh, I think the Italian wrestlers from yesterday pretty much got home in time before they closed down the north of Italy. Uh, so there were a lot of logistical things around it. Um, if you follow that, a lot of uh, flights all across Europe have been canceled. So there, there's been a couple of rebookings and all that. Uh, but I think all in all, this, this went a lot better than it could have done. That was literally my question. So I'll, I'll end by asking, obviously, this is Timothy Thatcher's goodbye to WXW. Um, do you have any thoughts on what Timothy Thatcher has meant to a WXW in his time here? Sorry, none of un a lot of us got the question. We're sorry about this. <laughs> well, that was literally my question about the coronavirus. So I'll ask. Obviously, Timothy Thatcher is saying goodbye. Uh, the show just come in um, in the tech, big tag match. What does it mean to you in terms of work he's done with the academy as being a wrestler? And what do you wish for him to go to NXT? I think that Tim is one of the most... or. I'm sorry, I'm always about the I, but we think that uh, Tim is one of the most influential wrestlers that came along uh, in the last year, last couple of years. He's one of those guys who helped everybody at the academy, everybody on the main roster, who always does what is needed out of him, and it's a big loss for WXW uh, to not have Tim on the roster anymore. So. I think because in December nobody knew, like, no news uh, broke out at that time, which is uh, amazing to me in 2020. Um, so nobody knew that he would be gone after that, and Tim flew himself in to watch the Ambition Super Fight, uh, and we were like, I think we were like, hey, what about a match, or was it even his, his, his pitch? It's all his pitch, so it was all his pitch, um, and it's happening, and I, th I think it's amazing that it happens tonight, uh, to give him the proper farewell, um, but anything can happen, right, in the, in the future, and hopefully it will. Headlock, der Pro Wrestling Podcast.